Shame on you! Shame on you! Here I am looking grungy at some random apartment complex to tell you that you have an absolute right to misinformation or even disinformation. You have an absolute right to listen to and to speak untruths, things that are not correct, things that science doesn't agree are correct. Because the truth is that yesterday's misinformation can easily become tomorrow's facts. So we didn't know very much about the world around us 2,000 years ago compared to today. We didn't know that much about the world around us 200 years ago compared to today. Oh sure, we had things like algebra 200 years ago, but we didn't know nearly what we do today about cells and bacteria, for example. We used to think that there were these different humors inside of people that had to be balanced or they would get sick. We used to think that if we put on a plague doctor outfit, which included a long beak-like mask with herbs at the end of it and the breathing holes right above those herbs to get the air to go through and around them to purify the incoming air, that that would somehow stop plague doctors from getting sick, when in reality it was probably that the mask completely sealed off the face and moved the breathing hole away so that they weren't directly breathing in other people coughing in their faces. But we didn't know that back then, and we know that now. <clears throat> now what do you think would happen if you told some human from hundreds of years ago that there are these tiny things that you can't even see called bacteria or viruses that get into your body and cause infections and inflammation and that your body cells, that you have a complex network of chemical soup and cells that control it that work to stop those things from being able to survive within your body. They'd say you were a lunatic. You'd probably get locked up because that's what they did with crazy people like you back then. More recently, coronavirus is a novel disease. Now, coronaviruses are not novel. SARS isn't novel, but SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus that we call coronavirus today, that's novel. We didn't know anything about it until early 2020, really, because in late 2019, it wasn't really on anyone's radar. There wasn't really any research being done into this thing that didn't really exist outside of a very small area yet. And as it spread and as it infected people and as we learned more about it, what we thought about it changed. It changed quite a bit. <clears throat> Here's an example of that misinformation. The misinformation morphing over time. January, if you cared about coronavirus, if you let it affect the way that you lived, you were a lunatic. You were probably a racist. Especially if you're Donald Trump. The racist. Donald Trump was a racist in January 2020 and in February 2020 for telling people that he was going to lock off the border, stop international travel to prevent the virus from coming into the place. And guess what happened? The virus came in, hit the United States, and started infecting the United States. Well, remember, it was racist to say that this virus was going to be a big deal. Dare I say it was misinformation. No, it's it's a little it's a limited thing. It's just it's just in China. It's not in the United States. It hasn't gotten here. It's not anything to worry about. Anybody who disagrees is disagreeing with the official narrative. Thus misinformation. And yet, in March, Donald Trump got burned by other politicians, especially those on the other side, for not doing enough to prevent the coronavirus infection hitting America. Yeah, it hurts, doesn't it? How about masks? Remember the official narrative, which you are not allowed to question, which YouTube said you are not allowed to question, is, ah, trust the experts. You must follow the CDC and WHO to the letter, except they keep changing what they say. Yesterday's misinformation, such as um, Fauci saying not to wear masks, that's ludicrous, they won't protect you, becomes tomorrow's fact, Fauci saying 
Masks must be required of everyone. Everyone must wear a mask all of the time. If they don't, then it's a pandemic of the unvaccinated, it's a pandemic of the unmasked. Those people represent a clear and present danger to other people in the country. And therefore, those people are directly attempting to harm you and your family, and you should do whatever you can to make sure that their lives are difficult and uncomfortable until they comply with the mask thing that, oh yeah, that's right, I did say that you didn't need them and give a bunch of reasons and say that it was backed by science. Not even just several months ago. Oops. Oh, yeah. So, yesterday's misinformation. Tomorrow's fact. You can repeat this for so many events in history. It just seems to have accelerated in how quickly we go from that's not true to that is the correct thing and you're not allowed to question it. It's amazing how that flip-flop can happen. But here's the deal. Not only do you have a right to misinformation because it's not necessarily always true or false, there are two other reasons. One of them is you can't make an educated decision without understanding the other decisions available to you. You can't make an educated choice about what path to take if you know nothing about the other paths. If you have three different options as to what to believe, you need the information that lets you make an informed decision based on your circumstances as to what path you should be following. Well, without the information, how are you going to do that? And the third, and I would argue the most important point here, the most important reason that you have an absolute right to misinformation and an absolute right to speak it and to listen to it uninhibited, is the First Amendment says so. But not just the First Amendment. Remember that that's just a law. And the First Amendment, at least very technically, only applies to the government and not to private corporations and such, except the spirit of the First Amendment does apply to private corporations. The spirit of the First Amendment applies to everything and everyone in the United States of America. And to go against the spirit of the First Amendment, you are supposed to only do so for a narrowly tailored interest. For, and you don't, this is not something that is legally required, but the spirit of the law is that anyone should be free to say whatever they want, and the opposite right must also be there for that right to not be violated. Other people must be allowed to listen, which means if someone speaks, other people who would like to listen need to be able to hear them. So your free speech rights, the letter and or spirit of that law, are violated when, say, YouTube blocks you from discussing what they dub misinformation at that time in the progress of the culture. So. This has been very interesting because the CDC and WHO have actually flipped positions multiple times. Most recently, and very interesting to me, remember that you were supposed to get a booster shot for your vaccine or else you were not fully protected anymore because the vaccine wasn't good enough. Well, wind it forward a bit, and I think it was about a week or two ago right now, as of the day of me making this, I don't know when I'm going to post it, that the WHO actually said they wanted to put a moratorium on any further booster shots right now. So what do we do with this? And the really funny part is seeing stuff that was correct and uh, allowed by the authorities and the only allowed narrative uh, a few months later, suddenly, when the authorities flip-flop, that stuff gets banned off, deleted off YouTube for medical misinformation, or Facebook, medical misinformation. Because it was absolutely correct and endorsed by the authorities, took the authoritative position, took the only position that you were allowed to take, and then when, oh, hey, information changed or politics changed, whatever, the authorities, the appeal to authorities, changed their minds, now what you made before violates the terms of service because these other people that told you one thing now are telling you a completely different thing. So stuff that they said was correct suddenly gets banned for not being correct because they changed their minds on what was correct. It's not retroactive. We really do need some sort of a, like an internet bill of rights that says that basically free speech is a guiding principle 
<clears throat> and a website like YouTube, if they host a video and the video is okay at the time it goes up and I don't know, maybe have a grace period of a month or two. But if a video goes up and it, and it was okay for a month or two, nobody cared, or even a year, it, it doesn't matter. You can take any time period and carve it up. Why should it be removed later for being naughty, bad, evil, wrong? I mean, the video's already out there. It's already part of the cultural zeitgeist. Removing it is dumb. In fact, I want to take a, a real brief segue. There was actually a very funny video that was on YouTube for 14 years. And it got taken down in the end by a Hasbro copyright complaint. I know it's not a terms of service thing. <clears throat> it, it's still a ridiculous takedown that shouldn't have been a thing because it, it wasn't a full episode of My Little Pony and all that. So I guess I'll have to see what makes you so special that she'd have to wait for you for this month. Oh, maybe. Shame on you! Now you watch My Little Pony! It goes to a big bearded guy and he goes, Shame on you! Shame on you! Now you watch My Little Pony! Now you watch My Little Pony! And it plays like four minutes or five minutes of a My Little Pony episode. An old one, like a 90s or whatever, 80s, 90s My Little Pony episode. And it was hilarious! It was so funny to send to your friends because they'd see it and they'd be like, oh! And then they'd get hit with that, and it was just funny. Subversion of expectations. It's like My Little Pony. It's like you go from watching some girl getting naked to My Little Pony. That is hilarious. Because, you know, jokes. Especially since the internet was edgier back then. But it was on the internet for 14 years. And a, and a copyright complaint, really? An automated copyright complaint by Hasbro is what took it down? I mean, I can get why Hasbro wouldn't want to be directly associated with that, but it was very clearly a joke. Didn't use the full episode, just enough to actually make you feel like, oh, there really isn't any more joke after this. He really did make me watch a few minutes of My Little Pony. Anyway, that that's my distraction, and uh, you get the idea. Like, comment, subscribe, look down at the bottom. There's ways to support me financially. Give me money for telling you about going from naughty women to My Little Pony, because that's totally what that video was about, and it definitely had nothing to do with misinformation and free speech. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.